Hello everyone and welcome into Coach Craig's Sports. This is the NBA DFS video for today, Wednesday, December 6th. If you're joining me for the very first time, this is how today's video will be structured. We will not be doing a recap since we did an in-depth slate breakdown yesterday. Today is going to be one of the more normal days. We have an 11-game main slate going on, so going to be a lot more games out there, going to be a lot more action just in general. So we're going to talk through the injuries for today's main slate overall. Then we'll go over to DraftKings and FanDuel and talk about my core picks on both sites. So it's going to be one player at each position. So point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, and center. Do apologize that this video is coming out a little bit later today. Had a few things going on this morning, was not able to get to it. So hopefully you guys are able to see it before lock. But without further ado, we'll get into the injuries and play for tonight slate so once again it is 11 game main slate we have three games tipping off right at seven o'clock eastern time tonight for the orlando magic they're without wendell carter and markel fultz once again jonathan isaac is listed as questionable he was available to play in their most recent game but did not see the court then on the Cavaliers side, we got Ty Jerome, Karis LeVert, and Ricky Rubio all listed as out. Dean Wade listed as questionable. We'll see if he makes his return tonight or not. But pretty standard lineup for this Cleveland team tonight overall, besides, you know, missing Karis LeVert, who did miss their most recent game as well. For the Memphis Grizzlies, we got Brandon Clark, Luke Kennard, Jake LaRavia, John Morant, and Marcus Smart all missing once again. So pretty similar to what we've seen in recent games. And then on the Detroit Pistons side, Monty Morris remains out. Joe Harris listed as doubtful, so that's a step in the right direction, although... I want to say last time I read the news on him, it said he was going to be out like four more weeks. So not really sure what's up with that, but his shoulder has been really bugging him. And then we have Marvin Bagley listed as probable to play tonight. For the Philadelphia 76ers, DeAnthony Melton is listed as probable to play tonight due to an illness. They do get Kelly Oubre Jr. back tonight after missing like 11 or 12 games due to his accident. It's kind of a weird situation. We're not going to talk too much about it. And then for the Washington Wizards, DeLon Wright and Ryan Rollins both remain out at this point in time. Johnny Davis, Jordan Poole, and Landry Shamit, all this is questionable tonight. So there could be a little bit of value opening up for this Washington team. You know, if all three of those guys end up missing, Corey Kispert's probably in that starting lineup, and Jared Butler could even be a value play off the bench tonight. Then we move down to the Brooklyn Nets, who are without Ben Simmons and Lonnie Walker once again. Derek Whitehead and Noah Clownley, both this is questionable, but both have not been in the rotation all season. And I believe Whitehead's yet to make his NBA debut. And then for the Atlanta Hawks, Bufkin, Gaye, and Johnson all missed once again. So pretty much what we've seen out of them as of late. The Spurs appear to be all the way healthy at this point in time. Then on the Timberwolves side, we got Clark McDaniels and McLaughlin all out once again. Anthony Edwards is listed as questionable to play tonight. We'll see whether or not he ultimately ends up playing. Probably now a guy that we want to get to just in general coming off the hip injury, but if he does play, it kind of hurts everybody else just in general. Then we move down to the Miami Heat, who are without Tyler Hero, RJ Hampton, Haywood Highsmith, who's been dealing with some back spasms. He tried to play the last game and played like three minutes, so definitely not a guy that we're going to expect out there for at least a little while at this point in time. And then Bam Adebayo is out as well, so that's going to open up some value at that center. Whoever ultimately ends up starting at center is going to look like a pretty decent value, whether it's Orlando Robinson, whether it's Kevin Love, whether it's Thomas Bryant. So that is just kind of how we're going to approach that. And then for the Toronto Raptors, Christian Coloco remains out, but that's it. So pretty much what we've seen out of them all season. For the Charlotte Hornets, we have Lamella Ball, Cody Martin, Frank Nielakina all out once again. Mark Williams is listed as questionable due to a back injury. If he doesn't play tonight, P.J. Washington is going to look a lot better. Nick Richards looks like an interesting pay down option at that point in time. But I do kind of think that Mark Williams does ultimately end up playing tonight. For the Chicago Bulls, Zach Levine's out as well as Batim, who really don't know too much about him just in general, but he hasn't been in the rotation either way. And then we got Torrey Craig listed as questionable. We'll see whether or not he plays tonight or not. Could open up some minutes for some other guys, and then Alex Crusoe listed as probable due to his toe injury. The Oklahoma City Thunder all the way healthy at this point in time. For the Houston Rockets, we have Victor Oladipo and Amen Thompson both out once again. Jack Landle does join them. He's out due to illness. And now we have Tari Eason listed as questionable. He was not listed here earlier today, so I'm just going to click on him to see what that's all about at this point in time, see if it's his leg or if it's something else. So he is also dealing with an illness, so Jack Londo probably got him sick. So we'll see whether or not he plays tonight or not. You know, if he doesn't ultimately end up playing, could open up some minutes for somebody else, but the starters are getting the bulk load of the minutes either way, so probably not too, anybody too interesting on tonight's slate overall. And then for the Utah Jazz, they are without Jordan Clarkson, Laurie Markman, and Kelly Olenek once again. So pretty much what we've seen out in the last couple games. For the Dallas Mavericks, we did have Kyrie Irving and Tim Hardaway Jr. Both listed as questionable earlier today, but both have already been ruled in. Grant Williams is listed as questionable, and then we got Josh Green and Maxi Kleber both listed as out. If Grant Williams misses tonight, somebody else is going to have to join that starting lineup. At this point in time, I would probably assume that's going to be Tim Hardaway Jr. since they're kind of running out of some of those guys that would fill out that starting lineup just in general. 
And then for the Portland Trailblazers, we got Jeremy Grant and Ish Wainwright both out tonight. DeAndre Aiden listed as doubtful due to his knee injury. And Anthony Simons listed as questionable. He had that thumb surgery to start off the year. He's only played one game so far. We'll see whether or not he comes back tonight or not. Could be an interesting Portland team. You know, you know, if we get both Jabari Walker and Dot Breath in that starting lineup, they're both going to look like really, really good value plays overall tonight. And then on Golden State Warriors side, Garuba and Peyton both remain out. Andrew Wiggins and Chris Paul both this is probable to play, so they should be back for tonight's game overall. So kind of kills off some potential value that could have been there with Moses Moody just in general. And then for the Denver Nuggets, Kankar's out once again. Jamal Murray is listed as questionable, and then Aaron Gordon's listed as probable. So for the most part, we'll see whether or not Jamal Murray plays tonight or not. He was kind of limited in practice yesterday, so I would assume that they give him just another game off. And then on the Clippers side, we got Brandon Boston and Mason Palmey both out once again. So that's kind of a quick little overview of all the injuries in play for today. If there's any injury updates throughout the day, I will be leaving them down in the comments as well as the starting lineups throughout the night. But with that being said, we'll get moved over to DraftKings and talk about my core picks over there. So we are going to start off at the point guard position with Darius Garland. He's $7,500. We're looking for 37 38 out of him. Currently, I'm projected for 38 tonight. It's a really good matchup against Orlando Magic, who have kind of struggled against that guard position just in general so far this season. Do you like the upside that Garland has? Only averaging about 34 on the season, but, you know, there was some injuries in the beginning of the year. He had that neck strain as well. So kind of brought him down a little bit, probably closer to the 36, but in a plus matchup is going to look pretty good overall tonight. Then at shooting guard, we have Boyang Bogdanovich, who, oddly enough, don't understand the shooting guard eligibility since mainly plays the forward position nowadays, but that's a whole different story for a different day. $5,100, looking for 25, 26 out came back, played 27 minutes his first time out, scored 22 real life points, 30 and a half DraftKings points. Looks like a really good play overall today. Currently have him projected for 28 DraftKings points overall. Has some upside for more. Could have a little bit of downside for less too if his minutes decrease for some reason, but as he is one of the best players on the Pistons, they probably want him out there on the court more times than not. Then a small forward, we're going to go with Brandon Miller. Not a guy that I completely love, but $5,700, looking for 28, 29 points out. Currently, I'm projected for, you know, about 28, 29. He's going against the Bulls tonight. Should be a decent spot there. Two teams that really aren't that great, but they are two teams that really do struggle on defense. So definitely like some of the guys from this matchup just in general. And I do like that upside that he does present. This is a pick that could very much change throughout the day, though. Then at power four, we're going to go to Jabari Walker for the Portland Trailblazers. If he's in that starting lineup for Jeremy Grant, he's going to look really good. If he's not, probably going to fade him today. But at this point in time, I'm going to assume that he is starting. They don't have to go to him if Anthony Simons gets ruled in. They could go to a small ball lineup with, you know, Anthony Simons, Malcolm Brogdon, Shaden Sharp, Kamara, and Dop Reith at center. And then he's kind of coming off the bench. Maybe his minutes are a little bit more limited there. They could also start uh, Matisse Thibault in place of Jeremy Grant as well. But with that being said, if Jabari Walker starts, you're only looking for 22 points out at $4,400. Would have him projected for 26, 27 points on DraftKings. Has a little bit of upside for more at the same time as well. And then last but not least at the center position, we're going to go with Dop Reith at $3,200. So kind of the ultimate chalk probably today at the center position. There could be a lot of it popping up, you know, especially with the heat center news and everything too. But at this point in time, it does not look like DeAndre Ian's going to play with that doubtful tag. Dot brief, only looking for 16 out of him at $3,200. You probably need at least 20 out of him for, you know, your big GPP contest. But ultimately, he's going to be a cash game play either way. Do like his upside tonight. And I do currently have him projected for about 23 DraftKings points. Could have some upside for more just depending on how many minutes he goes out there and plays. And the one thing about him is he's actually scored the ball pretty well this year. Hasn't been that great as a rebounder, but hopefully that kind of improves in this game. It is a pace-up spot versus the Golden State Warriors as well. But with that being said, if you go with these five players that I do have this year, you have $24,100 remaining, just over $8,000 per player. So a lot of room and flexibility, whether you want to pay up for Nikolai Jokic or Luka Doncic or somebody else at the top, or if you want to take a little bit more balanced approach and grab three guys right around that $8,000 price tag. But with that being said, we'll get moved over to Fandle and talk about my core picks over there as well. So at the point guard position, once again, it's a familiar face in Darius Garland. He's $7,500. Looking for 37, 38 fantasy points. Now, I'm currently on projected for 37 tonight. That is a medium projection, but so he definitely could have some upside for more. Kind of like I said on DraftKings, Orlando's really struggled versus guards so far this year. I do like Garland. I like the upside that he could present overall. And, you know, he's probably not going to draw a ton, of ton of ownership at this point in time. So maybe a guy that looks a little bit better in GPPs, maybe he goes to somebody else as a cash option. But I don't think he's the worst cash option in the world at the same time then at shooting guard we're gonna go with cam thomas $6,700 looking for 33 
34 fantasy points out. Averaging 37 on the season so far. Goes against the Atlanta Hawks tonight. Probably in the starting lineup once again. So he's going to look like a pretty good play overall tonight. Currently, I'm projected for 36 points. Definitely has a ton of upside for more, especially given this matchup. If he's out there, he's getting the minutes and he's shooting the ball well. Going to be a guy that probably smashes this slate overall. Then in small forward, we're going to go with Jabari Walker, $4,300. Once again, Jeremy Grant is out. If he starts in place of him today, he's going to look pretty good. Looking for 21, 22 points on him. Have him projected for 26 on the FanDuel side tonight. Has some upside for more. It is another pace up matchup versus the Golden State Warriors as well. And then power forward was kind of the position I struggled with the most today. So there's a lot of guys in that 8K range that look really good. I ultimately ended up going with the pay down option here and Isaiah Stewart at $5,200. Looking for 26 points. I'm currently am projected for 27. Pretty favorable matchup against the Memphis Grizzlies. It's a team that likes to play big, so he's going to be out there on the court more times than not. Could be getting some minutes squeezed just with everybody kind of getting healthy at this point in time with the Pistons. But I think he's one of those guys you can just kind of want out on the court more often than not. You know, as long as he's not getting into foul trouble against like Jaron Jackson Jr., you know, maybe it's the opposite way around and he can get Jaron Jackson Jr. into foul trouble and have a pretty good game himself. But definitely a guy I do like the upside of tonight. This is a pick that maybe could change throughout the day. But he definitely warrants some exposure, especially in large field GPPs, just with the upside that he could present at that $5,200 price tag. You could probably say the same thing about John Collins at $6,200. Really good upside, but has some pretty strong downside at the same time. And then last but not least, at the center position on FanDuel, we're going to go with Orlando Robinson at $4,500. If he starts, if it's Thomas Bryant that starts, then we'll go to Thomas Bryant. If it's Kevin Love that starts, we're probably just going to go to Doc Breathe in this position, but Orlando Robinson's kind of guy here at this point in time, assuming that he does ultimately end up starting. Looking for 22, 23 out of him. The games that he started so far this year, he's played like 28 and 29 minutes, and he's had at least 25 FanDuel points in both those starts. So definitely do like him tonight, the upside that he does present overall. There is a high cost in playing him here because you don't get to Nikolai Jokic or Joel Embiid, but... At the same time, if you play him here, you can play uh, another pay-up option at a different position, maybe a Luka Doncic, maybe a Trey Young, somebody else like that. So there is ways to play around it, but a little bit more risky on the FanDuel side where, you know, there is only one center position, and you do have two guys that could light up the slate in Joel Embiid and Nikolai Jokic overall. But with that being said, if you go with these five players that I do have listed here on the FanDuel side, you have $31,800 remaining, just under $8,000 remaining per player. So you know, you got a lot of room and flexibility to pay up there. I think if you're playing a lineup like this, you probably want to get Luka Doncic in there, probably want to get another star player as well, and then kind of fill out from there. That would be my preferred method. But, you know, if you want to go with a couple guys around that 8K price range, you could definitely do that as well. But with that being said, these are my core picks for both FanDuel and DraftKings for today, December 6th. As always, if you have any questions related to NBA DFS, be sure to drop them down in the comments and I'll get back to you as quickly as possible. Also, be sure to note whether those questions are more FanDuel or DraftKings specific, just so I can best help you as quickly and efficiently as possible. And then as always, I will be listing all the injury updates and starting lineups down in the comments below. And then last but not least, I will leave an updated core about 15 to 20 minutes prior to lock down in the comments as a pinned comment. So if you're checking up as we do get closer to lock, be sure to look out for that pinned comment. If there's no changes at that point in time, I'll just leave a pinned comment that says no changes at this point in time. If there's any other additional changes after that point in time, I will leave them as a reply to the pinned comment just in general. But with that being said, if you are joining me for the very first time or have yet to subscribe, please consider doing so. Definitely would appreciate it. It helps to build the community that we're trying to build here at Coach Craig Sports, which is one that's truly for you, the viewers, helping you with your DFS. Right now we have NBA DFS Monday through Friday in terms of the core pick videos. It's been a little bit of a shakeup up this week overall so tomorrow will be a slate breakdown video and then friday will be a traditional court pick video once again and then if you're interested in nfl dfs as well i do my player pool video typically on saturday mornings sometimes it comes out early saturday afternoon so definitely be on the lookout for that as well as my cheat sheets up on the sports affiliation website for both fandle and DraftKings for the nfl dfs as well and then with that being said if you're interested in sports betting if you're interested in prop betting whatsoever be sure to check out the links and promo codes down in the description below for prize picks, parlay play, and bet us. If you're a brand new user on any one of those three sites, you will get a match on your first deposit for parlay play and prize picks. It's up to $100. For BetUS, it's 125% of your initial deposit up to $2,500. So definitely some great opportunities to check out there. And then if you have any other additional questions related to sports betting or prop betting in general, feel free to reach out to me, whether it's down in the comments or on Twitter at Coach Craig Sport and be more than happy to help you with that journey as well. But with that being said, that's all that I truly have for today's video. Definitely do appreciate each and every one of you tuning in. Definitely means a lot to me. I hope that each and every one of you have a great rest of your day and some pretty good luck in NBA DFS tonight.